Good morning. I am really bummed that I can't be with you in Phoenix today at Grid Interop, but I'm thankful that my colleague Nick Sinai is down there to celebrate and to encourage more activity in one of the key areas of our uh, smart grid strategy. I want to begin my remarks today with a bit of a story. In August of uh, this past year, President Obama challenged American employers to help our returning heroes find jobs. It turns out that Iraq and Afghanistan veterans coming home actually have some of the highest rates of unemployment. And the president said, uh, we've got to do more to ensure that these heroes are transitioned thoughtfully into civilian life. He asked the industry to help identify over 100,000 jobs that are capable of being fulfilled by our uh, returning heroes. He said to do that over the next three years as an ambitious goal, a call to action for the country. Well, in less than 90 days, the president was successful in attracting well over 100,000 commitments from the private sector and growing. This exciting energy around helping people, responding to calls to action, it's been a hallmark of the Obama administration. It's been a priority for President Obama personally. And this story has a very important technological component. You see, one of the challenges is now matching up those returning heroes with the employers who are looking to hire them. So the president unveiled about a month and a half ago a strategy to connect veterans to their uh, employers who are expressing a, an explicit commitment to hire them through a program called the Veterans Job Bank that harnesses open standards that would allow any job listing in the country to be tagged with a certain schema that would allow any uh, search engine to crawl those listings and to present them in a consistent format for veterans to find. Within 90 days, the industry achieved consensus on this job posting schema, and we had over 500,000 jobs tagged and available for veterans on day one. That was only half the battle, and it's a celebrated story nonetheless. The other piece was how to connect veterans uh, to the broader civilian employment ecosystem. Enter the VA's blue button, a simple idea that would allow our veterans to digitally check out of the military and to ensure that whatever we have about their health condition or their uh, benefits experience are accessible to them in machine readable formats. Blue button was an idea that was conceived a year ago in August when President Obama in delivering a speech to the Disabled Veterans of America challenged uh, our own agency to ensure that every veteran could download his or her personal health record data with the click of a simple blue button. And again, 90 days after that call to action, the VA delivered. And in collaboration with Medicare and our good friends in the DOD, we've now enabled over 500,000 veterans to download their own personal health data. So look at the scenario. We have a blue button service that allows a veteran to download health information. We have a job schema that allows job listings to be discoverable for veterans uh, wherever they are. The last missing piece of the puzzle was to expand on blue button to add in new data sources that spe specifically describe the qualities, the attributes, the learning experience that they've gathered uh, during their term uh, uh, of duty. This week, the VA is announcing that they're expanding Blue Button to include veteran benefits data. And that information is now being applied by a number of private sector uh, employment services companies on the internet that are inviting veterans to check in and participate in their growing array of services. An apps ecosystem has emerged in healthcare, not only involving the government allowing the download of health information, but a wide range of companies from Walgreens, Aetna, United Health, and startups like Patients Like Me, now part of this growing movement to ensure that data about an individual is available to them when they want it, how they want it, and that it can be served up to third-party app developers at the individual's choice for purposes of creating better valuable services, in this case, to help them on their health needs and to get a job. We've seen this concept work in healthcare. We've seen this concept work in uh, veterans to find jobs. 
why can't this common sense approach be applied to the energy industry? And that's why we challenged ourselves to build that green button. Consumers should have access to their energy usage information. It should be easily downloadable and in a machine-readable format from offered by their utility or retail energy service provider. With this information at their fingertips, consumers would be enabled to make more informed decisions about their energy use, and when coupled with opportunities to take action, empowered to be more actively engaged in their overall energy consumption. Further, making this information available in standardized file formats will help spur innovative new consumer applications and devices from entrepreneurs, big companies, and students. Here are just a few ways we believe the green button data might be put to use today. I'm sure you have many more ideas, but imagine web portals that analyze usage and provide actionable tips. Customizing broadband-enabled thermostats for savings and comfort. Community and student energy efficiency competitions like one Secretary Chu announced last year. New decision support tools to facilitate energy efficiency retrofits. Measurement or verification of energy efficiency investments to spur more capital investment in the area. Real estate information. Energy costs for tenants and new home purchasers. And strengthening our solar decision making. Optimizing the size of those rooftop solar panels. This concept of encouraging consumer access to data has been long coming and it's been a central theme of the president's strategy for our 21st century smart grid. This framework launched at a White House event in June of 2011, highlighting the value of empowering consumers with enhanced energy information to lower costs, ensure privacy, and shrink those bills. But it's not just the administration saying this. It's also our state regulators. NARUC recently passed a resolution endorsing smart grid principles that included the importance of providing consumers with affordable and timely access to their own energy use data. In the spirit of the President's We Can't Wait challenge, I called on the industry at Grid Week September 15th to develop this green button using the Smart Grid Interoperability Panel standards to ensure that it was done in an open and collaborative manner with multiple stakeholders around the table. We embodied the principles of lean startup and developed something that we helped hope would have been easy to use. And I got to tell you, industry is stepping up to empower consumers. I had the wonderful time of visiting with California's three largest utilities, PG&E, San Diego Gas and Electric, and SoCal Edison. They responded to this call to action and agreed to collaborate with NIST and the Department of Energy. We convened a meeting in early October to discuss the concept with all three of the utility tech leaders. They agreed in a consensus and collaborative manner to work towards green button capability in 90 days. Well, before that 90-day mark, they hit the mark and then some. By November 21st, all utilities agreed on the specifications for green button, which we featured on the Smart Grid Interoperability Panel, Twiki. The spec is based on the work that's been done in the Smart Grid Interoperability Panel and aligns with industry standards as encouraged by NASB. Now, anyone can see this spec and start building those apps. And only a few weeks after that release, here at Grid Interop, there are half a dozen companies that are showing their prototype green button capabilities. And the California utilities have pledged to make that green button available to their own customers starting in January and scaling across the state to access to be accessible across millions of homes. Now, while we're moving quickly, I wanted you to know that I recognize green button is just the culmination of work of years of activity in consensus standards work. Today, in the round table, you will see the beginnings of the fruits of your collective action. Now, I'm personally upset that I can't be there to participate in the discussion and see the live demos, but we're just scratching the surface of what's possible. For vendors in the room, when you visit the California utilities that go live early next year with Green Button, what innovative app will you offer to the residents of California through that Green Button data? For regulators in the room, especially those that authorize smart meter deployments, what are you waiting for? When will you follow California's lead and get moving? For the utilities in the room, what's preventing you from moving forward on green button in your own markets to empower the consumers that are ready to take on this opportunity? Who's next going to step up and participate in the green button challenge? I can't wait to hear the results. And Nick, I'm counting on you to come back with cards and commitments from all the stakeholders that you're visiting because this movement's just getting started and I can't wait to see where it ends. Empowering consumers, strengthening support around the country for smart grid, lowering costs, improving stability and reliability. It's what we've seen and called for in our strategy for the 21st century grid. Thank you for your time and I wish you well. Thank you.